Hey everyone, welcome to Witcode, where in this video we're going to be building a multi-client command line chat using Node.js. So what this, what this um, program will consist of is a server and then a client where the server, where the clients, multiple clients can connect to the server. So let me demonstrate this by if I run, these are all individual commands or command lines. If I run the server program and then I run a client here, let me run another client here and another client here. If we say this person's name is Witcode, this person's name is Bruce, we can see each time that it prints out to the server console that a new client has connected. Anyone who's already in the chat will be known that someone else has joined. So let's say someone over here joins as well called Freddy. We can see Bruce joined the chat, Freddy's joined the chat. After Bruce joined, he gets Freddy. Now we can send messages, say, hello is me one there. Everyone gets the message, I am here. And then you could say, uh oh, it's Freddy, or something like this. And then if we want to leave, so say we don't like Freddy, we will just do quit. And then they get broadcast to the wicket has left the chat. The node process is, um, is shut down. But these users can, of course, um, still send messages to each other. And then we also get printed to the server. Client has left the chat. And we can also just start up another client for someone else to join, say, called Mike. Now we have Mike has joined the chat. Someone doesn't like Mike, they quit. And um, this is essentially what we're going to be building. So this application will consist of two files, server.js and client.js. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open, let's actually just create them in here. I'm going to create server2.js and then just client2.js as well. And then let's just focus on these two here. Also sh shut down all these except for this one here. And so this server.js file will be in charge of broadcasting messages to the clients and this client2.js file will represent a user of the application. And also the backbone of this application will be the net or the node net module. And the node net module is an asynchronous network API for creating TCP servers and clients. And if you're wondering what TCP is, TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, and it is essentially a protocol designed to send packets or messages between devices on a network. And TCP is the protocol, mo protocol most often used in message sending applications because it ensures that packets and messages are delivered successfully and also in order, which is unlike, its, um, which is unlike UDP. So let's start out with our server.js file. To get started, we're just going to import the net module. So we're going to do that with common JS syntax, which will just be require net. And now we're going to create an array of array called sockets, and this will hold our sockets that we create. And so if you're wondering what a socket is, a socket is an endpoint in a connection between two programs. So essentially each, each socket represents a client's connection with the server. And Node has a class, a net.socket, that is an abstraction of a TCP socket. And an object of the type net.socket is created by a client to interact with a TCP server. But before we have our clients connect with our server, we need to create our server. And we can do that with the method net.createServer. And the method net.createServer returns an object of the type net.server, which is a class used to create a TCP server. And also an object of the class net.server is also an event emitter. And an event emitter is a module that facilitates communication between node objects. And it is these events that will essentially drive this application. And the method create server here actually automatically listens for a connection event. And in other words, so in other words, it listens for incoming connections. And when it receives one, it creates a net.socket object to communicate with whoever connected. And the net dots and the net.socket object passed to this method. Um, so what it does is it'll return a socket object here. And this net.socket object passed to this method is the one that will be used to communicate with whoever it is that connected to this server. So first, let's focus on adding new users to this chat. So as you saw, whenever we ran um, a client, entered a username, they were connected to the server. And to do this, we just need to push this socket object 
to an, our array of sockets. So we're just going to do sockets dot push, and then we're going to push our socket into it. And also, I believe I was using arrow syntax, and I just forgot that right there. And then let's also log out that a client has connected. Let's do an exclamation mark too, you know, to liven up a bit. And so one of the reasons, we'll see this more later, but one of the reasons why we want to push this socket to the sockets array is because when a client sends a message, we will loop through this array and send the message down each connection or socket. So in other words, this socket array or sockets array here will be responsible for sending a message to everyone in the group chat. But now let's make it so our program or our server listens out for messages. And to do this, what we will do is create an, a listener for an event of the type data. And to listen for events, we will just have to tag on the method on. And we want to listen for the event type is data. And then what it will return is the data that was sent along with this event. Because remember, an object of the class net.socket is also an event emitter. And this means we can listen for events, which is done with this on method. And specifically, what this on method does is it is used to register listeners. And here, we are listening for data from the client. More specifically, we are listening for messages from the client. So this data here will be the messages that are sent from this client file here. And so after we have done that, we want to broadcast the message to everyone in the group chat. In other words, all the sockets in this sockets array. So in here, what we're going to do is we haven't made this method yet, but we're going to make a method just called broadcast and broadcast like this, and we're going to pass it this data, and we're also going to pass it the socket object. So this method broadcast is one that we will make ourselves soon, but it, is, it basically accepts the message to send to everyone in the group chat, and also the socket connection that the message came from. And the reason we want to pass this socket is because um, the we want the clients who sent the message to not receive the message. So basically, if it's like picture sending a message through a cell phone. You don't want to receive the message that you sent. And now another error, or another event we want to listen to is an error event. So this is just error like this. And what we are going to do is, of course, it'll pass the error along with it. And this event will be emitted from the client if the user presses Control-C in their terminal to end the program. So remember when I had these running here, if we press Control-C, that would um, emit an error event. And so to stop, this is basically to stop a large error message from being logged to the console of the server. What we will do is we will just make it so we log a client as disconnected, like this. And now remember, this whole project is very is event driven. So another event we're going to be listening for with our on method, of course, is a close event. So we'll just do close. We're not going to pass anything, I don't think there's anything to pass in here, but a close event will be emitted when a client types quit into the console, which will remove them from the chat. So this event, of course, all these events will be emitted from our client file, but what we will just log if the client wants to leave the group chat is a client has left the chat like this. And now we have set up our server and registered some events we want to, for it to listen for. However, to actually establish connections with clients, we need to listen on a specified port number. And this can be done. Remember, this net.createServer returns a TCP server. And so what we want to do is we want to listen on a specified port number. So this method listen causes the TCP server to listen for connections on the provided port number. And what is a port number? Well, a port number is a 16-bit unsigned number used to identify a process. And here, the process is our messenger application. To boil this down a bit more, most computers run many processes. IP addresses are used to say which computer to talk to, while a port is used to say which process on the computer the data should go towards. So our clients that we create will be establishing connections with the server on port 1234. And now, let's actually create our broadcast function that we mentioned briefly. And remember, because of, or if you didn't know, because of hoisting, 
even though we deter um, create this function down here, it'll be hoisted when the program is run. And so even though we, we reference it above, it'll, like we reference it here, this will run fine. But just a quick message or side note. But what it took was message and also socket. But let's change this to socket sent. So this method, of course, takes the message to be sent to everyone in the group chat and also the socket the message came from so that they don't receive the message that they sent themselves. But now, the first thing we want to do is check if the message that was sent is equal to quit. But also we don't want to just do message, but we want to do message.toString because this message will be in a byte array form. And to turn an array, or I believe it's a buffer, um, buffer of bytes, to turn that into a string, we can use the toString method. But so what we'll do is just if it equals to quit. If you can remember from the demonstration, that is because if the message is equal to quit, then we want to remove the user from the group chat. In other words, we remove them from the socket array, because the socket array contains all the connections to the server, which is essentially everyone in our group chat. And to do this, we'll first find the index of the socket in our sockets array using the index of method. So let's do const index equals sockets.index of, and we want to find the index of the basically the client that sent the message. And then what we want to do next is we want to use the splice method to remove them from this array. So we'll pass an index and then one. So what is, real quick, just what is this index of method? So the index of method is part of the JavaScript array prototype, and it returns the first index of the provided argument. So here, the argument is the socket of the client who sent quit. In other words, the client who wants to leave the chat. And then next, what is this splice method? Well, the method splice is also part of the JavaScript array prototype, and it changes the contents of an array by removing or replacing existing elements and or adding new elements in their place. And splice actually has a few function definitions, but one is splice where this is the start and this is the delete count, which is of course what we're using. And start, which is the index here, is where in the array we want to start removing elements, while delete count is how many elements we want to delete. So we want to start deleting at the socket index of the client who left the chat and only remove them, which is a delete count of one. And now let's actually focus on broadcasting the message. So if the message was not quit, then we want to broadcast the message to every connected client except the one who sent the message. So if the message is not quit, we will loop through the sockets array, and for each socket, we will write the message down the connection. So we'll do sockets dot for each, and for each socket, use an arrow syntax function, we just want to write the message. And so real quick, just for each, so the for each method is part of the JavaScript array prototype, and it executes the provided function one time on each array element. So our array element here is our socket, and what we want to do each time is send the message down the socket connection. And this method here, write, is a net.socket object method, and it sends data on the socket. And we can actually pass it um, a second parameter specifying the encoding, but if we don't, it defaults to UTF-8 encoding, which is fine for our program. However, if you remember, we don't want to send this message to the client who sent the message. So we need to check if the socket sent provided to our broadcast array is equal to the current socket being iterated on in our array. And if it is not the client who sent the message, then we send the message down the socket connection. So to do this, we will just do an if statement saying if socket does not equal socket sent, then we will send it, send the message to them. So if it is equal to them, then they won't receive the message that they sent. But this is all we needed to do for our server file. So now we can start working on our client. And so we will do the same thing with our client file at the top, we are just going to require the net module, which is a global node module. But so as this application is a command line messenger, meaning the messages that we want to send are typed into the command line, 
we need a way to read and write user input into the command line. And in Node, this is done with the module read line. So read line, it's another global module, read line like this. And we can read data from the command line by using the read line method create interface. So create interface like this. And then to read input, what we want to do is pass it an object with the key input and the value process.stdin. And this value process.stdin process essentially means a node process. And what this stdin does is it returns a stream connected to standard input, which in our case is the command line. But what we also need to do is enable writing to the command line. And this is done with the key output. And then we just pass it our node process and standard output. And so the key output specifies a writable stream to write data to, and the value process.s standard out is used internally actually by console.log. So all this code is saying here is that we want to create to read data from the command line and output data to the command line. And now something that we're going to work on next is if you can remember each each user in this application needs a username to enter the chat. So we need a way to make the program wait for the user to enter a username. And once they do, we connect them to the server. So in other words, a user is not allowed to connect to the server until they enter a username. And we can do this with promises. So we will do wait for username, and we can create a new promise, and we will pass it resolve, just like this. And so this promise object here represents an eventual success or failure of an asynchronous operation. And so in our case, the promise will be successful when the user provides a username. But to wait for the user to provide a username or to prompt them, we, can, we need to use the method readLine.question. And the method readLine.question allows us to create a prompt in the command line and wait for user input. So we can say enter username to join the chat like this. And then we provide a callback function that has whatever they provided, which we will call answer. And so what we will do is we will mark the promise as su successful and then allow the program to continue after they have entered a username. So what we just do is this resolve method to our promise and pass answer. So after the username has been provided, we will now form a connection with the server. And when a promise is successful or has been resolved, we can call the method then on it. So if this one wait for username has succeeded, or in other words, this asynchronous operation of waiting for a username, user to type in input, when they've typed in their username, then we will call this function here. And the method then accepts whatever was passed to this resolve method here, which is in this case is the username. So I called this answer, but we could we could call you can call it whatever you want, but it's it's it should probably be not answer, but username and then username like this. But so as I said, when the when they've actually typed in the username, we want to connect to the server. And so we will do that with the method um, using our net module, net.connect. So to form a connection with the server, we use the method net.connect, and this method creates a new net.socket object, and then immediately executes the function under the hood, socket.connect, which will connect us to our server. Something though that is important to specify, or remember, is that our server is listening on a port. So it is listening on port 1234. So we want to pass the key port to this method and pass the key 1234. This is, of course, so that it connects to the port that our server is listening on. But now let's tell some um, other users that we have joined the chat. So we also want to send over the username that the user has entered to notify everyone in the group chat that a new user has joined. And remember, a net.socket object is also an event emitter, so we can listen for registered events with the on method. So using our socket again, and one of these events is connect. So we will just 
make it like this. And of course, this is the callback function for when this event is fired or when we, re, we react to the connect event that has been emitted. So this function here that we provide to on will be executed when the client connects to the server. So here, when we connect to the server, we will write over the user's username and that they have joined the chat. And this, of course, will be broadcasted to everyone in the chat. So we'll write over, we'll use this syntax here. Sorry, get this. We'll say username has joined the chat. And now let's work on sending messages over to, um, or sorry, let's work on sending messages over that the user sent, um, starting with if the client has typed the word quit into the console. And so, because remember if they type quit, they leave the chat. But anyway, lucky for us, the interface we created um, with read line up here is also an event emitter. So we can listen for registered events on it as well. So in here, we'll use readline.on because it inherits from event emitter. And we will listen for the event line. And this, this event line is triggered whenever the user presses the enter key when typing into the command line. And we then execute the callback function, passing it data, which is what the user typed in. So this callback function here, data is whatever the user typed in to the console. And so we first want to check if what the user typed in was equal to quit. So we're gonna say if data is equal to quit, and what this means is that our user wants to leave the chat room. So we first write to the server that we have left the chat using the socket. So we'll do socket write um, dollar this username has left the chat, just like this. And then we also want to set a timeout of a second. So I'm gonna do socket.set timeout, and it's in milliseconds, and one second in milliseconds is 1,000. 1,000 milliseconds is one second. And the reason we wanna do this timeout is because when the user leaves the chat, we want to send over the word quit to the server so they can re remove us from the chat room. And if we don't use a timeout, then the data here, username have left the chat, could possibly be merged with the word quit and the server will never receive just the word quit. And remember here, we are checking for if the message is quit, um, and then we will be removed from the group chat. But if we write over username has left the chat, and, and then really quickly, we just did socket.write um, quit like this, these two could get merged, and then in our check on the server, it would never equal quit, and it would just send out all the messages again. And this will make more sense um, soon, but essentially if we call the right method in succession, the data sent over could possibly be merged. But if the user did not type the word quit, then what we want to do is just write over, um, we just want to write over dollar username, and then of course a colon, and then also the data. So this is what we're gonna do to send messages and now let's use another event that will um, work with messages received from other users. And this is gonna be the data event. So we listen for the registered data event and then we'll just console.log out the receive message. So the callback function will be the message received. And I'm actually gonna paste this log function some, from somewhere online where essentially this will add color to our log statement in the console. And this essentially will allow us to distinguish between messages we sent from those that we have received. But now let's get back to leaving the chat. And so if you can remember, this timeout that we set here will emit a timeout event that we can then respond to. And then when this timeout event has been emitted, this is when we wanna write over the word quit. Because remember, calling this time, we were calling this timeout because we want to prevent the merging of the message quit from the message username has left the, the chat. So when the server receives this word quit, here, it'll remove us from the chat, which essentially means removing us from this socket array. However, what we also want to call within this timeout event handler is we want to call socket.end. 
and this will essentially um, tell the server that we want to close down our connection. Specifically, actually, socket.end will send an, a thin packet to the server, and thin packets are sent to close down a connection, and the server will then respond with a thin packet to the client to accept the socket termination. And we also want to respond to the event emitted when socket.end is called. So this, like socket.setTimeout, also emits another event. And the method emitted by socket.end is the, um, you probably guessed it, but the end event. And so when the socket has, connection has ended, we want to terminate this application or this node process. And to do that, we will just do process, process dot exit. And so in node, a process or process is a core module that provides methods to programmatically exit from a node program. And of course, this is what process.exit does. And then finally, we just need to handle one more event, and that will just be the error event. When an error has been thrown. We're just going to log. This error would be if the server, say, shut down. And we would just say, the server seems to have been shut down. That would not be good, but it's a possibility. But so this is actually the whole, pro the whole program. So we've now written our clients to connect to the server. We've written our server to handle the clients and basically be the middle guy to broadcast the message out to everyone. So all we need to do now is just check that it works, which is always the scariest part. But let's create multiple terminal windows again. Um, close out of all these. Moment of truth. So let's first run server2.js. And then let's run client2.js. So we got an error that readline.question is not a function. And so after looking through the documentation for readline on this error, it seems as though it's the way we structured this. So what we should have done is we should have called this directly from requiring our readline module. And that's how we can actually use this, um, how we can actually set up our read line module to use. So now, if we run client2.js, we can see it works. So that was just a little bug. And then let's run this one, node client2.js. OK, and now we enter WIC code. We get client connected, which is good. Um, Bruce, Bruce joined the chat, it's good. Freddy, Freddy's joining the chat. Hello, everyone. Oh, we got another error. Socket is not a function. And so, as is per usual when I do this, um, the reason that this is happening is because I was just typing on this line here. We can see in the call stack that it says client.js, line 28. And so, on line 28, of course, we're just calling socket. And that is, of course, not a function. So, let's run this again. Close this out. Let's run this again. We can see this seems to be working, which is good. Close this out. Run this again, because we need to restart all the processes. And then say, hello. We could say, hey, what is up? That looks good. Fred joins. Hello, anyone there? Awesome, that all looks good. Um, let's say what code leaves. What code has left the chat? Awesome. Um, Bruce just <laughs> says Bruce. Um, and then let's say quit. And then let's just try and join another one, see if it doesn't crash. Mike joins the chat. Hello. And we get a message from Mike. Awesome. But so that was this program. Um, if you found it helpful, useful, um, please like the video. Consider subscribing. But besides that, Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, I'll see you in the next one.